the scales never lies. Oh my God, absolute clickbait. I just, I couldn't help it, couldn't help it. So this is what a client got told by a parent uh, recently. And I just thought it was amazing because it's what most of us believe is that this piece of metal, whatever this is, doesn't lie. I'm here to tell you that it fucking does, right? And here's why. And I'm going to explain this to you because once clients realize this, it changes their whole fucking approach to fat loss. And basically, a lot of it comes down to knowing the difference between weight loss and fat loss. Two different things, okay? First thing, I'm going to talk a little bit about a client and then I'm going to tell you actually, okay? Come down to the level to be really serious here and sound like a newsreader. Okay, I have a client. Over the past six months, she has gone from a size 12 to a size 8. She has dropped a back size in her bra and also cup size. And her waist is down over 10 centimeters. So her entire body composition has changed. Okay, just visualize that. Someone gone from a size 12 to a size eight. Now, here's the plot twist, okay? She has just about, not even dropped one kilos on the scales, but her whole body composition has changed. How has this happened? I'm gonna hit you with a little thing that you'll have heard before. What weighs more, a kilo of rocks or a kilo of feathers? They weigh the same, right? And here's where you need to understand something. Say this, I have a chest infection, so why not use these? This is a kilo of fat, okay? And this is a kilo of muscle. They weigh the same, but they don't take up the same space. So what I mean by this is muscle is denser than fat. So even though these two things will weigh the same, this takes up less space and thus is smaller, okay? So how would this look if you were to take two people and compare them side by side? Say I have someone who weighs 60 kilos, but they don't weight train, they don't do a lot of exercise, and it's mainly consistent of body fat. But then I have someone who's 60 kilos, and they do a lot of weight training, and they hit their protein, they're, they're a lot slimmer, okay? But they weigh the same. How does that work? This person has more muscle in their body okay and this is where we need to understand the difference between weight loss and fat loss okay so have you ever gone on a night out and not eaten your dinner because you were bold right and drank vodka all night and got on the scales the next day and was down like a kilo or two and you're like holy fucking shit look at that i'm after losing a kilo no you didn't no you didn't you're extremely dehydrated okay and chances are the day after you step back and scales back up again okay that's an example of weight loss though you have lost weight but that's not fat and this is what we need to get our heads around and this is why clubs like sim and world and weight watchers and stuff like that just solely basing your progress off of weighing scales is going to deter you and if you are a woman whose weight is going to fluctuate throughout the month and your entire basis of whether you're progressing is based off this you're really going to struggle and if you've been someone who's been yo-yo dieting for years then come to realize that this doesn't work okay you need to use other metrics and other things that i use with my clients are firstly i want to know they fucking feel good more importantly than ever and um, the next thing i want to know is how are their clothes fitting you know that pair of jeans that you put on and you really really struggle to close them and all of a sudden you put them on and you're able to close them does that not tell you more about whether what you're doing is working than this? Yes, again, that works better. Uh, photos, what we use is measurements, things like that, okay? They are gonna tell me a lot more as a coach than what this is. I have a lot of clients that don't use the scales at all for their check-in, but if you are using the scales, yes, we want to see a downward trend over time, and I'm not talking about week on week, I am talking like over the course of a couple of weeks, couple of months, we want to see a downward trend, but usually it goes like this, okay? I have another client, just to put things into perspective, who hasn't changed all that much on the scales in the last five, six months we've worked together, right? 
she recently went to her dress fitting for her wedding and the dressmaker begged her not to lose any more weight because the dress, she's completely changed her body. Her body composition is completely different. She's dropped dress sizes. She's more toned. She's more defined. But she hasn't actually changed all that much on the scales, okay? I'm going to leave you with this lovely thing with my chest infection things. Fat takes up more space than muscle. What do we want to do? If you want to lose body fat, you need to be in a calorie deficit and you want to be weight training because we want to be building muscle no matter what your goal is. Fat loss, muscle gain, maintenance. Always want to be getting muscle. If you find tips like this helpful, give me a follow. Share this, please share this so people understand the difference because this is the reason why so many people are banging their heads against a brick wall with weight loss. Have a lovely week. Chat to you soon.